Okay, guys, we have a new lecture today. So before we move forward, any questions for the midterm exam? Let's take a look. Okay, so for the first one, it's pretty simple. Uh, a lot of students lost the points over here because they didn't follow the format. You need to print a begin first, which is super simple. Just print the string over there, and then have a for loop uh, increase by two every loop. You know, stop at eight, and then print another line, empty line, and these three numbers, and another empty line, and end. Okay. Um, if you really don't know to, how to do it, send me an email. I'm going to send you a solution. But I think you should be able to do that. Okay. And for the next one, a couple of issues here I saw in your submissions. First, the pin hiders. Uh, so the PCB board is being used by the user. So you need to provide the inputs and outputs for the board. So definitely have all the pin headers uh, input on the left side, output on the right side of the board normally. And also the SOPA package, that's a standard surface mount package. When you design as integrated circuits, and for example, you, you want to submit your design to MOSIS or somewhere else, uh, to request for a fabrication. So this is a cross-sectional view of the chip. You can see that uh, they have a little, it's called die attach. It's a substrate inside a package. And that's a die. That's a silicon die, which has all the integrated integrate circuits inside. And these are the bonding wires. Very, very thin wires. So if you have a, a wire bonder machine, I have one in the 602 lab. So you can actually uh, solder a very thin wire to the pads on the chip and to the outside pin on the package. So you have to tell them what kind of package you want to use. So the SOP8 package is one of the packages uh, It has been standardized. If you tell them it's an SOP8 package, it's going to look like uh, this. Okay, uh, but that one here is not showing the ground pad. So definitely need to add the ground pad in the middle so you can uh, dissipate the heat for the chip. Right. Okay, that's everything about uh, the midterm, but if you have extra questions, definitely ask me. So the new tutorial or the new experiments is regarding the PID controller. It's a pretty important technique being used pretty much everywhere uh, in the industry, especially for robotics and anything involved uh, mechanical design. So there is a major called uh, mechatronics specifically in a lot of other institutions. So you probably have learned it somewhere else, you know, based on the theory but I have never programmed in real life using a, a controller to implement it. This is really fun. I mean, this is going to be a super fun project. You can see the system is giving a feedback really quickly because the digital systems are fast. And based on that, so the errors can be calculated and um, feeding to the system and trying to correct itself to make something work. Um, so I personally really like doing projects with controllers, any type of controllers uh, inside the my controller. It's just not a simple open loop system. It's a closed loop, always giving feedback, how to make it work. And so this tutorial contains a very simple example, which is uh, using the photo cell. It's called LDR, the light dependent resistor. So if this resistor is being uh, placed in a pretty bright environment, then the resistance of this resistor will be super low, like a wire. 
if it's in dark, then the resistance will be huge. So in that way, you can use this sensor, very low cost sensor, to sense the intensity of the light. And we don't have another sensor being used in this tutorial. You can see it's just the LDR, but nothing else. But do you have any other examples in real life for sensing and feedback? Something like that. Like the airplane. As the airplane is keep changing the angles when it's flying, and if it's, it's in the incorrect angle, so it is able to correct itself and just keep flying in the in the same uh, gesture or direction. That's one thing. And anything else? Temperature, the thermostat, right? Thermostat also has a feedback system. And do you have a feedback system in your brain? Do you have one? Vision is, are your eyes giving some feedback signal? Uh, if I'm trying to grab, some, grab this spray bottle, right? If I'm gonna grab it, if I close my eyes, I won't be able to find it, right? If I open my eyes, I can give a feedback in real time. It's actually really quickly. I can grab it because I, when I'm, my fingers are moving closer and closer to this bottle, I can see it. So I know where to go, right? So that's a really fast, real-time uh, feedback system. And I found one pretty interesting thing uh, for my eldest daughter when, when she was uh, like one year old. And she was trying to feed herself, use a spoon, and just not directly going to her mouth, like going to here and here. The, the, the because, you know, the, the hot wire in her brain was not really developed, was not mature by that point. So she couldn't have a really um, a functioning feedback system in her brain to control the muscle and to move the spoon to her mouth. You know? But we can definitely do it without any problem. We can we can see the spoon and feed, feed ourselves right easily. So these are all feedback systems in the real life. And I worked on a little robot balancing car. Did I show you that balancing car? Have I showed you? No? So it is a very good example, I think, for, for students. Thank 
Okay, they will put that on the table. And I can even put some walls to the car. So it needs to be working. Uh -oh. I don't know if it's a little bit of a problem. I think it's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, you can actually see the, the motor is adjusting the angle. Um, yeah, I can pull the motor, but not the photo car. I think it's a little bit of a problem. But you guys are trying to. So we, uh, we don't have the uh, budget to know the lot of other things like sensor, uh, five thousand meter FTP and all these things. We don't provide tools. We just provide the tool in the case that it's going to be wonderful. Now let's take a look at what we have here. So this is a LED. It can be any of the LEDs you have in the box. And if you turn it on, it's going to deliver a light signal to the sensor. So let me know what, what is this resistor? Is that pull down resistor or pull up resistor? Pull down resistor. So if I have a, this one in a dark environment, what's the voltage here? In dark, what is the voltage at this point? Mm -hmm. So dark, this is like a disconnect circuit, nothing. So it's going to pull this point down to the ground. So in dark, you are getting zero volts. So which means less intensity of light, you got less voltage. Whenever you increase the intensity of the light, the resistance here getting smaller and smaller, so it's trying to short this pin to the five volts more and more. So which means more light, higher voltage. Okay, so it's linear. But before you start the experiment, you need to test the ambient light because you are living somewhere at least to have some kind of light, right? It can be from the light in the room, can be the light from the sun. Uh, the little LED here is just trying to add some extra light to this sensor. So I have to you know, try to put them close to each other. So the light here for, from the little LED can affect the resistance of this guy. So it's going to dominate the signal being received by the LDR, but not the ambient light. So do not let the ambient light to dominate the signal being received by the LDR. Since you need the, you couldn't control the ambient light, right? You couldn't tell. Hey, sun, just uh, be brighter, right? It couldn't do that. Or dimmer, right? So what you can control is the LED. You can use the PWM signal, which is a pulse width modulation. So it's delivering a different signal intensity to the LED. You wanna know what is a PWM? Let's take a look. It's just a pulse with different widths. Um, so this is a pulse signal. And if T1, T2, so these two time periods, T1 here, T2 here, or you can say this is key on, probably a better term, and T off, T on and T off, if T on equals to T off. We call the duty cycle. It's called duty cycle. It's 50%. So duty cycle is T on over T on plus T off. It's 
called beauty cycle. But it does have to be 20% of the time. So you can modify that. So T on, T off. So this is still a period. But the duty cycle just changes. Has been changed, right? So the duty cycle. Probably, you know, somewhere around 15%, I guess. And you can change the duty cycle of the pulses in order to change the power being delivered by the pulses. Why is that? So tell me directly which one has a higher power density or higher power, power being delivered to the, to the outside world. Which one has a higher power? So the average power, how to calculate it? You know, it's this one is being turned on for longer time. So definitely deliver more power. That making sense? Because the pulses are being toggled really quickly. So the circuit is actually not able to tell if it's a DC power supply or it's a, a pulses like this. You know what I mean? It's just accepting the signal as uh, as a power, average power being delivered by the two signals, any type of signals. So this one has higher average power compared to this guy. So if you deliver this pulse to the motor, it's going to rotate faster. Same thing, if you deliver this power, this pulse, the kind of this, right? if you want to turn on the LED, just give a DC voltage, right? If you try it, use your LED, you just give a pulse like this, you just short this pulse to an LED and resistor to protect the LED, like 330 ohms, something like that. You are getting an intensity, for example, 500. Okay, if you just connect this signal to LED, is this going to be dimmer or brighter? Hmm? Dimmer, right? So the intensity probably is 300. So we are using, we have been using the pulses to modulate the um, intensity of the LEDs and the speed of the motors as well. Keep in mind, this is a pretty important technique we can use using my controllers. You know, otherwise, how, how can I do it? Just tell me, you know, you have a digital mic controller and you definitely have all these uh, digital IO ports for the metal controller. How can you use these digital GPIOs to control analog world? Let's say I just want to deliver, I just want to use a digital IO pin on the metal controller to control the intensity of the LED. How can I do that? If it's a digital pin, on the on and off, you don't have so many continuous levels as an analog signal to change the intensity of the LED, right? It's not like you can, I can give five volts to the LED, it's brighter, I can get four volts, three volts, two volts, so I can change the intensity of the LED. No, you don't have it. You don't have that different levels of voltages on the mic controller. So how you can change the intensity of the LEDs? PWM, pulse width modulation. PWM in short. It's actually just changing the width of the pulses. So to change the intensity of the LED or the speed of the motor, things like that. So you have a PWM module. It's just a physical pin of the microcontroller. So there's a pin. There are several pins going to PWM, actually. So just pick up one of them. So you don't need to worry about what's inside, right? It doesn't matter because you just need to use some of the libraries so you can define 
the pulse width directly just using very simple line of code in IDE. So it's going to deliver different width of the sig pulse signal for you. We can use that to count to uh, control the intensity of the LED. See here, pin three is a PWM pin. So that pin has a PWM block or module inside the chip. That's how you can use it. It's not like every random pin on the Mac controller has a PWM module. No, it's not. Only a few of them has. And so before you start doing any controlling uh, or PID controllers, you have to test the ambient light intensity first. You know, because you have this kind of intensity already, you can see something because you have light in the room already. And before you add some extra light intensity using the LED to the photo cell, you have to know what's the offset or what's the existing light intensity already in the room. Right, so that's how you can do it here in this piece of code. That's it, no extra any hidden code. Just just copy this and connect the circuit like this. Just use this one and then read from here. So that's A0, analog pin. So use the serial monitor, analog read A0, so you can read the intensity at A0 as a voltage because the light intensity is being converted into an analog voltage signal right by this circuit. Okay, so no LED yet, right? So this one only has the LDR with a resistor in there. And so you can read the ambient light intensity by this line and then print it, print it to the serial monitor. That's what you got. That's what I got, actually. So you must test it yourself and see what's the intensity in your room. If you change a different location, for example, you were trying to working on this project on campus in the morning, right? If you want to keep working on that during the night or the evening at home, you must do this again. If you are having a different ambient light intensity, right? You have to recalibrate it before you move forward. You have to ch keep changing the values. This is a kind of auto control. You don't have a black box to keep a constant ambient light intensity for you, right? So you have to keep doing that. And then I want to test if I keep the LED, which is the LED pretty close to this LDR. If I keep this LED in a full intensity, 100%, what's the maximum light the LDR can receive? So the maximum light being received by this LDR includes the light intensity from the, from the LED, which is being placed very close to it plus the ambient light from the sun, from the light in the room. So you turn it on, turn on the LED, and read another value. I, I used this piece of code, and you can see I read 734, which is not right. Just look at the code. Why it's not right? So for the setup function, I turn on the serial monitor, and I set up the number three as the output pin to provide a, the PWM pulses. And digital write, so that's set up the PWM value at the number three to be 255, which is a maximum power output for the PWM module. Don't worry about you know why. So if you do a digital write, if you do a digital write to a PWM pin, you are going to you can use all the values from zero to 255 because it's an 8 bit PWM controller. You know what I mean? What is the two to the ace? Is Arduino 8 bit my controller? Is, is Arduino 8 bit my controller? Yes, it is. It has all the 8 bit registers inside my controller, the CPU. So it's the 8 bit my controller. So 2 to the 8 equals to what? 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 4th, right? 16 times 16, what is that? 256. So there's a little resistor has 8 bits long. 
to control the output power of the PWM module from 0 to 255, so totally 256 numbers. If you set 1111 for the 8 bit all ones, it's going to be 255. So that number is being used to control the output power of the PWM pulse. So which means if you put a zero in there, it's going to tell the microcontroller to give a constant low voltage. If you put a 255 in there, it'll be something like this, right? I mean, which is equivalent to full power, PWM, full power. Mm. So, oh, hi, right? Logic hive everywhere. That's the highest power it can deliver from PWM. And the lowest power it can deliver from there is zero, just nothing. Okay, if you give a one, two, three, ten, something like that, so it's Keep giving a so probably it's going to increase the width of the high voltage more and more until 255, which is constantly five volts, highest power delivery. So it makes sense for here to use a 255, which will turn on the LED to the full intensity. Okay, so I know what's the maximum, what's the maximum light intensity of the light the LDR can receive. So I can, I, by, by turning on the LED at full power. So after I turn it on, after I turn it on, I directly, see here, digital write. I write it, after, right after that, I read it. So which means I have an LED here, so the Arduino can run this really quickly. I just give it a full power, and the LED is start trying to turn on to the full power. But the Mac controller can run all this code and lines really quickly. So it actually, after I deliver this full power, I instantly read that intensity from the A0 pin using the analog read. And then I just print it. And then I end, I ended that loop. I just run the loop for once. And I got the value. And I'm saying, hey, this is the maximum light intensity I can receive by the LDR. So which went wrong? What's the problem here? So the digital system is running at 16 megahertz, right, super quickly. After the this line is being executed, it is still, of course, it already delivers that 255 to the PWM pin being connected to the LED directly. So the LED just received that intensity or command and trying to make itself brighter, which needs some time. Right? Because it's so dumb, so it's not bright. So it needs to be brighter, it needs some time to learn. <laughs> anyway, so it's trying to be brighter, but need time. It's an analog LED. You really need to charge up the little photo dial, the capacitor to build up the charges and to make itself brighter. However, the microcontroller can run the code really quickly. So before it being turned on to the full power of the LED itself, this line is just trying to read that intensity. So when the LED is still getting brighter and brighter, you just read it in the middle because this can run super quickly. That's why this is not right. You need to delay this a little bit after you deliver the full power to the LED, wait for a little bit so the LED will get warm up and turn on to the full power, to the full brightness, brightness, and then you read it so you can get the, get the full power. So this is not right. That's why you have to add 
a delay in the middle. So just hold and then read. So you can see the number becomes way larger than 700. So 900 something is pretty close to the, the maximum value the Arduino can read. Remember what's uh, what's inside the microcontroller for the for the analog pin? What's inside? What is inside the analog pin? So this is reading analog voltages, right? Inside here in the microchip, this is a block called ADC. And this is a 10 bit resolution ADC. So which means the entire voltage range for the microcontroller is five volts and it has 10 bit resolution. So which means there are so many steps to trying to divide the five volts into two to the tens steps of accuracy. So two to the tens equals to 1024. So which means the smallest signal your ADC can sense which is every single step here is 5 volts over 1024. If we assume this is a thousand, so it's somewhere around 5 millivolts. So anything lower than 5 millivolts or any changes lower than 5 millivolts cannot be resolved by the ADC in your Arduino chip. So it has to be a change of higher than five, five millivolts or something, uh, so the microcontroller can sense it, all right? That's why it's a 10-bit microcontroller, and the digital readings for, my, for the ADC, and you are expecting zero, definitely, if there's a zero input, it's going to convert zero volts to a binary value, which is zero. If it's five volts, What's the rating of the ADC? If you give 5 volts to A0, what is the rating here? 1023. These are totally 1024 steps, including 0, so 1023. Okay. So that's why if you have 900 something, it's already pretty, clo pretty close to the maximum. I think it's fine. All right, if not, what you want to do? How can you utilize the full range so are not wasting any resolution of the ADC? I mean, I turn on, I already turn on the LED in the full power, 255. I couldn't make it brighter because that's the LED I bought. And I'm reading this. It's pretty close to 1023, but it's not 1023 yet, right? So how can I make it to 1023? No, it's already the full brightness. Just move it closer, right? <laughs> so it's going to saturate the LEDR. That making sense? Definitely, if you put the LED here and the LEDR here, that, I, I'm pretty sure you couldn't sense anything from the LED because the ambient light will dominate the brightness or the signal being received by the LEDR. The more closer, 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 and until it's super close to each other, I'm pretty sure that LED's light will dominate the signal being received by the LEDR, but not the ambient light. You agree with that? Okay, so you are not seeing um, 1023, which is fine, but if you want to, if you see something like a 500, there's something going wrong, right? It, you couldn't, because if you do not turn on the LED, you are still getting 700. And if you turn on the LED, you are just seeing like 750 or 800. That's not good enough. You don't have like too, too much 
uh, ranges or variations for the signal. So the signal, the LED is not affecting the signal input significantly. So it's not working really. So you do want some uh, bigger differences before and after you turn on the LED. And this is acceptable, you know, not ideal, but uh, I would prefer you guys to find a little darker environment. So if you do not turn on the LED, it's only reading like 200 something. You turn on the LED, you are getting a solid, which is ideal. Because you can have a lot of room to control your signal, right? And now let's look at the PID controller. So let's write down the theory first before we move forward. The core algorithm of the PID controller is pretty simple. And the mass model has been drawn on top of the page. This looks intimidating, but it's not. It's very simple if you implement it to the, to the C language in your IDE, my controller. Okay. So what's going on here is you set up three different gains. It's called P gain, I gain, and D gain. So that's a proportional gain, integral gain, and differential gain. So there are three parameters to control, uh, to be multiplied to the error in real time. And after that, you add all the three errors times again separately and add them together. And you get the final output from the PID controller. And that one, you subtract that PID output from the set point, the set point of the system, which is the final point ideally you want to set up. Do a subtraction so you can get an updated error. And you use that updated error, which is a function of T because the error is being changed all the time in real time, and plug in that error into the Calculation again, so you can get an updated PID output and then get another error and then get back into there. Okay, so the essential algorithm is here. The function of the proportional, proportional um, gain is trying to adjust the error more aggressively, but it can not achieve that really accurate result compared to the start point eventually because it's just uh, doing this, let me do it here. That's the start point. That's the bottle, right? If I'm going to pick up this guy, pick up this bottle, that's the side point, that's the destination. I, I'm going to reach to there. If I'm only using a proportional gain, so which means I can only change the, lo the location, the distance from my fingers to the bottle linearly. So it's going to be something like this, okay? linearly. Okay? So it's adding up 2 by 2 or 5 by 5. I don't know, like five, 2 inches by 2 inches, right? 2 inch, 2 inch. Two inch, two inch, two inch. Oops, already passed the bottle. Let's go back. Boom, still not at the bottle. It's, it's, it's linear, it's doing the same, uh, you know, stride every time. Mm? Mm? So it's gonna oscillate. You can never reach that point. You know what I mean? It's adding two and minus two, adding two, minus two, it's always larger or smaller than the set point. So you're getting the same errors all the time. We can never reach this point. It's gonna oscillate. So by adding the uh, integral and differential gain, you're able to add some, subtract or add to your proportional gain. So like here, there's a two, right? So 
I have two inches from here to here. So the other two will adjust the error and to make it closer and closer and finally reach this point. But the proportional one cannot do that. So you do need all the three parts to make it uh, uh, able to reach that set point. And the way to implement this is here. So for example, I have a loop function. So that's a loop function in your Arduino. And first of all, right, first line in the loop function, you want to sense, sense the current intensity first. So you know the current status. So before, so for example, before I reach, want to reach to that bottle, I have to take a look, like how far is away from the bottle, right? I have to sense it every time. At the very beginning of the loop, every time, I have to sense it first. I have to take a look and then do it. Take a look, do it. So we have to take a look first. So you want to sense it, which is, uh, you can get intensity reading from where? From an analog read from A0. So sense it first. See, see how much difference between the current intensity to the target intensity. So after you see that, after I, I, I see there's a difference from here to there, and I, I saw the difference, and the next step will be, you want to calculate the error. So I see there are five inches from here to there, so I want to move a little bit toward that direction. So the second, second step will be error, calculate the error using the current intensity, minus the step point. It's a value, can be intensity, goal, the goal for uh, whatever you want, your, your, your LED or uh, the signal being received by the LED are to reach, right? So you get an error after you read it, you see what's the difference between the current intensity and the set point intensity. The goal, okay? And next, you want to calculate the PID value, which is the PID output. So K is a gain you set up, you can assign a value or a constant to it, times the error. So I'm just trying to implement this one. See, KP times the error. KP is a gain, the proportional gain, times the current error. So that's what I'm doing here. KP times R. So R is being calculated by this. Plus the PID I is integral output. But this one is being integrated, which is actually being added up. So integral integration is just keep adding the past values to the current values, right? Do you understand that one? It's, so integration is just actually integrate all the values together, right? So if you look at the algorithm here, you don't have to, so, so in, in the digital system, you couldn't do a continuous integration, but what you are doing is just adding up all the past values to the current ones. That's how you can implement it, uh, this kind of thing uh, numerically. So the way to do that is I need the PIDI, so which is a value I'm going to use here. So I, I, I need to get that value first. So this value should be the current value plus this. Take a look. KI is a constant. That's an integral gain. You put inside this integration, no changes, right? So it's going to Ki times the current error and integrate it. So Ki times the error and being added to the past one, to the old one, and updated to the current one, and use it here in the PID calculation. 
So you are done with the integral part, and now the differential part will be KD, the differential gain times error minus the last error. So the current error minus the last error. So what is the last error? It came from the last loop. So in the end of the loop, the current error becomes the last error because next loop, right? In the next loop, you are getting a new current error. But the last error becomes the last error. <laughs> Is that making sense? So in the end of the loop, because you are done for everything already in the loop, so you have to assign the current error to this variable. So it's going to be used in the next loop as the last error here. And the current error will be updated in the next loop. So you can get a difference. That's a delta error, delta E. So if you look at this equation, so what is delta E? DET. Right? DET, delta E. That's how you do it. Here, that's DET. So you must be wondering, where is DT? Where is DT? What is DT? Do you need to do do you have to put a dt here? You can, but you don't have to. Why? Because dt is everywhere. The next time it samples the error, so the time being spent in one loop is dt. And you can, if you want to really want to do that. See, there's no DT for the proportional gain, but there's a DT here. You can definitely use this one times DT. And uh, this part divided by DT. But is it, is it changing anything? You can see KD is already the constant you assign in the, in the front. If you do, because dt is, is a constant, dt is a constant, so the time spent, it costs, or no, sorry, the time it takes to run a loop every time is a constant. So if you put a, this, this one, so the det over dt, which is exactly the same as here, I just wanna be honest, right? So det over dt, and you wanna exactly implement whatever in the equation, you do det over delta t, it's just adding, dividing a constant from KD. So you can directly ch just change KD. It's no, 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 no difference. It's just adding more, more uh, tasks for yourself, just more work. It's just a constant, right? It's already contained in DT, in KD. No, no, no matter. This is recorded, so I know it's confusing. Is it confusing? It is confusing. It's very confusing. Not just confusing, it's also very boring. All right, <clears throat> then that's a PID controller. That's it. After you are done with this project, you can add another line in your CV, right? PID control. <laughs> Okay. So what's the point here? I have a piece of code, but I had some glitches in there. I intentionally plug into the code. And compared to whatever I just wrote on the paper, this can be a little bit different. If you look at this, I set up 
the start point to be 400, which is here. And that's the real time data I'm reading from A0. What's the problem here? What is the issue? So imagine that you have an LDR in the lab and without turning on the LED, you are reading 800 intensity and the set point is 400. So what's the issue? Can you turn off the sign? No, you couldn't. So it will never reach the set point. If you do nothing, it's right at 100, but you want the set point to be 400. The little LED is adding things to your LDR, but it's only able to make it brighter, but not dimmer. Because the LED is not a dimmer, you couldn't pull it down to 400. So that won't work. You have to look at the ambient light intensity first, and then pick up a good set point, which is higher than whatever uh, in, in, the, in the middle of the ambient light and ambient light plus the LED's intensity, right? So the set point should be in the middle. Okay, and here I, I have a pretty short example for you here. And you can see that I actually didn't <coughs> use the D gain at all, because you can see P is zero, I is zero, D is zero. Uh, at the very beginning, but you can see here is like for the gains, KP is 0 0.1, KI is 0, KD is 0. So the gain times the error will be 0, so it's not changing anything, but only the proportional gain is uh, effective in the equation. Uh, but here is a problem. This just making this a little bit more complicated. You can see that. Uh, KP, only KP is not zero, but KI and KD are zeros. However, I use the PID value, the past one, to add to the PID controller's output and then assign it to the, to the previous PID value, so which means even though I didn't have any I gain, but this, this line is actually doing an integration. You know what I mean? It's just a little bit weird way to do the integration. You don't have to do it in this way, but if you just use this, which will, will make it work, so you can have all the demonstrations working for the videos. But if you want to just use whatever here and try to you know, implement this pseudo code into your Arduino microcontroller, you can still make it work as well. But if you want to use this one, it's fine too, okay? And there are a couple of other experiments in here. And if you don't have enough time, we don't have more time here today to explain all of them. But uh, just start working on that, at least have task two done in a week. Okay, let's see what's the deadline for this task. 21st which is not realistic, so probably 26. I'll change it to 26, all right? So we have another chance, uh, probably on Monday, I'm gonna explain this to you guys a little bit more. Let's do it again. I have a second lecture on that on Monday. And um, so we have another week. So for the next week, have another week to work on this until 26. Okay. I'll see you on Monday.